Have you ever seen a gathering of young people in which the theme is not, that's unfair? <laughs> I mean, I had this the other night uh, with, with the teenagers that live in my neighborhood. They mm-hmm. were making a point, and it essentially boiled down to, that's not fair. <laughs> now, it turns out that young people are not always the best guides as to what fairness is. They, they lack the experience and the knowledge necessary to determine it. Right. And that is not, uh, that, that's a proposition that also applies to the Occupy movement. Uh, among other things, their entire terminology, uh, occupy, we're going to occupy something, suggests that there's more going on here than just a, a heartfelt concern about one's economic prospects. Yes, there are some kids who have recently graduated from college with uh, degrees in anthropology or art history or other incredibly vocational uh, <laughs> subjects. Uh, They're frustrated they didn't immediately get a fifty or sixty thousand dollar job that would allow them to pay off their fifty or sixty thousand dollars worth of student loan debt. So they're upset. And I think they have some reason to right. be upset. I think they were sort of suckered into making some decisions that weren't in their long-term interest. But that's different from a lot of the energy surrounding this movement, which really is anti-capitalism. Uh, it's, it's the same kind of messaging, and in many cases, the same people who previously uh, protested the World Trade Organization's meetings in the, the U.S. and Canada and Europe that frequently pro- were the main mainstays of the anti-war protests of the middle part of the last decade. So the idea this is some group of people who've never been politically active before, and suddenly they spontaneously built what amounts to a, a sort of quasi-Marxist economic critique, and they're advancing it at the town square. That's nonsense.